faculty in residence and I am um, I come from a place where I hated rubrics. I hated them. I thought everything about them was evil. And sometimes I still feel that way. Um, I, I often get in heated arguments with Julie Moore about rubrics, but I have found with Canvas that rubrics have made my life and grading easier. And, um, and they've been really helpful. And so I've used rubrics a lot over the past couple of years and found ways that rubrics have helped me and made my job much more lovely and grading much less of a pain. Um, how many of you are grading on Canvas? I almost said Canvas. Nope, Canvas. Wendy's grading on Canvas. Do you love it? <laughs> Are you finding that it's kind of love hate? Sometimes it kills my soul a little bit, and I'm like, I can't do any more. I know Walter grades on Canvas. Rose, what about you? Are you grading on Canvas? You can answer in chat, or you can just like talk. Oh, yeah, Walter gives you. Just wanted to. Talk it out loud, Rose. Rose, you're not on mute anymore. You can just talk. Oh, super. Um, yes, I use rubrics. Um, I grade in Canvas, but I use um, just rubrics that I've created and I send out that rubric to the students, but not um, using the rubric system within Canvas, if that makes sense. Oh, it totally makes sense. <clears throat> it totally makes sense. And how is it working? Are you... It, it has really made a huge difference in the expectations and certainly with transparency and clarity, the students. I, and honestly, I've been teaching about, I teach one class and I've taught it about seven times now. And each time the rubric has gotten more and more sophisticated. Um, and I just, I took the summer institute last, this past summer and just made a huge overhaul and it's, I think it's made a tremendous difference. Oh, good. What do you teach? I teach uh, psychosocial dysfunction in the OTA program. Oh, good. Okay. Okay. Hey, Ari, right. can I add a comment? Please, always, Wendy. Yeah. So, so I usually use a, a checklist of sorts. So I tell them up front, you know, doing this is worth this many points and blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And I, I find that students don't tend to read the checklist. And so mm -hmm. I'm a little bit concerned that I'm going to put all this effort into converting the checklist into a rubric and they're not going to read them either. <laughs> so oh, thoughts can, on that. We can, can, yes. Oh, sorry. I was just going to kind of jump in. And the thing that I integrated last quarter, which was really successful is I had all my students do peer reviews on each other using the root using a rubric template and, and it just made this huge difference. So it actually ended up being a two part thing rubric plus peer review um, the week before major projects were done. Yeah, kind of like sneaky, sneaky, forcing them to interact with that rubric in a way that, mm -hmm. yeah, like forcing them to read it in a, in, in a nice way, not a, <laughs> right, right, not punitive, not punitive at all, where they're like, oh, that's what that actually means. Wait, what? I should do this with my paper, or I should do this with my um, assignment, Wendy. Yeah, and it's, that's been really helpful. And Walter says, I give my students a rubric of sorts, but I provide students a holistic overview of what makes a good paper assignment. I grade in the holistic sense with references to the rubric specifics. Okay, so I ask this because um, I just wanna make sure that we're kind of hitting everything that you actually need. I, I have been to um, these kind of things where I'm like, well, that didn't answer my question at all. And so I just wanna make sure that we're doing what you actually need and want. So anytime throughout this, if um, you have questions, please ask anytime or, or if you need more information or if I'm not being clear or if you just want more um, stuff. So I am just going to talk about what kind of has worked for me, what I've learned and um, I think Walter may have a comment or question. Oh yeah, go ahead. 
I just wanted to mention that one of the issues that I have with the rubric sometimes is I'll give my students the rubric, I'll read the student's paper and I'll see, well, this is a C paper. So now I need to go through the rubric and show how that is a C paper and mark here and there and things like that. So sometimes the rubric, um, sometimes I, I, the rubric becomes a tool backwards to justify the grade because I can read the paper and I can see, well, this is a B paper, or this is a C paper. Now, mm -hmm. I, and sometimes the rubric then becomes the backdoor tool to show the students why I think so. When, mm -hmm. in essence, I'm, I, I'm sure everyone understands what I'm saying. Yeah, and what I often do, like when I have a paper or an assignment, um, even when it's not a paper is I'll have samples of, and I do this all with permission. And if I don't have permission, I'll create one is, okay, so what does a C paper look like, you know, and why? And I'll give examples based on the rubric and we'll go through that. And sometimes that often that helps, um, you know, I'll do an annotated example of what, a C paper looks like, or even a failing paper, and that will really help, or an A paper and different A papers, because I have lots of like A and B papers and what that looks like and why. I don't want to overwhelm them, but um, sometimes that really helps. Uh, and that's, based what I on mean. That, that's what I mean when I say I use the rubric, but I grade more on a holistic. So mm -hmm. I, I provide samples. Here's an A paper, here's a B paper. This is what generally is in an A paper, this is what's in a B paper. This was mm -hmm. the C paper, so then I can ref I can have them refer I can refer them to the to the holistic uh, overview. But then mm -hmm. sometimes I find I have to go back and point out yeah. some of the specific things from the rubric that I provided as the basis for that holistic one. Yeah, and that can be one of the you know love hate things about the rubric system, and so sometimes. I've found that I've had to mix it up with rubrics. And so I'm going to talk about four different kinds of rubrics today because I have had to mix it up. Sometimes the holistic rubric has not worked for me um, because, because of just that. I've been like, this is not working. So I'm going to talk about four rubrics today, um, just depending and in, in working with faculty, that holistic type of rubric has not worked um, for many different kinds of faculty. Um, and it hasn't worked for me and for my students. So a rubric is a coherent set of criteria for students' work that includes descriptions of levels of performance quality on the criteria. Um, sometimes I have to remind myself what a rubric actually is. I'll be asking it to do more than it is, or uh, I'll, I'll want it to do less than it actually is. So I, I have this up so that I can remind myself what it actually is. <clears throat> and the types of rubrics that we're going to do today, or go over today, are um, single point rubrics, one of the lesser known, you've probably heard of an analytic type rubric and the holistic rubric, um, but there are two other types, that single point and the primary trait rubric that um, I'm gonna show you today and how I've um, hacked the rubrics with help from many different people to work really well in Canvas. Canvas rubrics aren't super easy to create off the bat you know, the Canvas rubric tool, but once you've kind of figured it out and make them, they can make your life so much easier. So the first one, uh, rubrics in Canvas, um, you can add rubrics to assignments, to quizzes, and to discussions. So you can add them to all three of those things. You can create a rubric one time and then you can copy and reuse it in any of your courses, which is really, really nice. And uh, it, it makes life so much easier. You can search for existing rubrics um, and edit and use in your course. You can search for them in Canvas Commons. And Whitney has been amazing and created this Green River repository of rubrics. So you can actually search for them and I'll show you how to do that. That of people have volunteered their rubrics that they've already made. Um, 
And so there's a Green River repository of awesomeness that people have made rubrics and you can take them and make them your own. So you don't have to start from scratch. They are very quick and easy to set up sometimes and very quick and easy to use in SpeedGrader, which I love. So I'll show you how to do all of those things. Um, and hopefully you can take that and kind of go from go from there. Are there questions so far? Okay. Um, I, okay, I'll start there. A, a demo, kind of a quick demo. You can start, I'm gonna show you how to just start to create the most common type of rubric, which is the analytic rubric. And so when you go into an assignment, any assignment, you can just, I'm gonna actually back up here because I did that too quickly. You can go to any assignment right here. Click on the assignment. And then down here is a little rubric thing. And so you click on it and you give your rubric a title. My, my fancy rubric. And right in here, you enter your criteria. And this is gonna be obviously different for the field that you're in. In English, we might have, you know, we want to, um, you know, if it's Walter, maybe he's going to enter grammar and, um, you know, spelling, usage, Oxford comma, and you can make this as long as you want. And then you can add point values here and you can really make this your own. You can update the rating score right here and you can say um, exceeds expectations um, and do a rating description right here. And then you can add and you can do, a, you know, you can adjust the points here to whatever suits you, meets expectations, blah, blah, blah. Um, um, you'd, you'd obviously want to do something like, um, I, nicer than needs work, but um, <clears throat> you'd want to do something like, um, you know, pay attention to grammatical structures and then blah, 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 and then Maybe for this one, you could put does not meet criteria, expectations. And then the, what that means. And you wanna be um, as specific as you want to be or what that actually looks like here. And I usually write this out in a Word document so that I can mess with it and I cut and paste it just cause it's easier. And then you can add another criterion here, like um, organization, if I'm doing a paper. But this is gonna differ if you're in the sciences or something like that, blah, 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 blah. If I don't feel like doing that from scratch, um, well, actually, let me do something first. If I, if I want to use this for grading, if I want to, make sure that I'm using this so that I can assess this student using the rubric. I'm gonna click this little box here. If I want to write freeform comments, I'll click this box here. But I wanna be careful because then I won't be able to click these boxes. And then I'll create my rubric. If I don't feel like making one from scratch, I can go here and find a rubric 
I have made a bunch of rubrics in my classes before, so I can look at the rubrics I've already created. Um, I have a bunch of different rubrics that I've already created, so I can be like, oh, I want to I want to use this rubric. I've I've created this one before and so I want to use this rubric. This one looks great. I love this rubric. I'll use this one. But maybe I don't want to use this one. Maybe I hate this one and I'm like I don't even know where to start. So, I'm going to go find a rubric and so I'm going to go down here to um, Green River College, hmm. and you'll all have that available, and you'll see all of these rubrics that people have donated, volunteered. And you can look through these and be like, oh, someone volunteered their English 101 rubric. I'll look at that and see if that works for me. This looks good. This looks like an awesome place to start. I'll use this one. Or maybe that's not in my field. Maybe um, this written work rubric might work better for me. I'll, I'll try that one. Oh, this looks fantastic. I'll, I'll, I'll use this one. This is a great start, but I can, I can always update it. I'll edit it. And so you can edit it and make it your own. And make, I'll use it for assignment grading. And then I'll update it. Thing to note about those rubrics is that the ones that say community are the ones that were uh, created by the LOC work group of faculty members. Mm -hmm. so they're very broad in general. Yeah, this community responsibility and community written communication. So they might be. Um, Those are more broad in general to maybe everyone. And then similarly, like discussion board is also kind of broad in general. So the general ones will be under community and then the okay. rest will be under their course name. So, yeah, those ones, and I think we're going to try and probably get more in here. Yep. But there, it's a wonderful place to start if you need them. And Canvas Commons is a good place to start. But um, that's how you create a rubric. Are there questions on that? Oh, yeah. Is it easy to delete a rubric? Oh, yeah. If, if you add one, and you're like, oh, oh dear, I, I messed up. You just hit the trash can. Oops, all gone. Can I've trashed several rooms. Or someone has, uh, after you've used it on a grading assignment? Hmm, I don't know. I wouldn't be able to. I don't think you'd be able to after you've used it to grade an assignment. I don't know. Oh, you know what? You can. I I just did it. I just did it over in. I just did it. I literally just did it over here in this. Yeah, you can. Okay. I did it and I added it an, another one. I just put a different one in there. So, Ari, does that mean, I guess one of my questions would be, what if you're like, okay, I'm going to try this for the first time on this assignment, and you start grading the first couple uh, submissions, and you go, oh, epic fail. I need to just <laughs> deep six this rubric and go back to my old way. If you've already had just a couple already graded, do you think it'll let you get rid of it? Because Canvas is weird. I've even made updates to quizzes where I'm like, oops, I should fix those directions. And if a couple students had already taken it and I push through the updated directions, it doesn't actually update those students. Quizzes. Um, this is what I suggest. If you start an assignment with a rubric, you're going to make that rubric explicit to students and it's going to carry through. I would end with that rubric and then I would 
refine it for the next assignment. Take what you've learned, apply it to the next assignment. You know what I mean? Well, so in other words, no. <laughs> once, once you start with it, you can't go back. I, I wouldn't change it mid-assignment if that's what you've made explicit to your students. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. It could be that the total points for a particular, um, so my assignments are smaller than yours. We're not talking mm -hmm. big papers. We're talking about weekly labs. Yeah. Uh, and I could see where maybe the total points are the same. Perhaps I'm just like, oh, I just made, I just made such a mistake in, it's just not working. You know, it's mm -hmm. not that I'm gonna change the criteria that I'm gonna use to grade them. It's mm -hmm. just that the rubric just isn't working for whatever reason, not yeah. to change what the students think they're getting graded on. I mean, I, I can't think of an exact um, example right now because I haven't used them. I, I just yeah. know that when I try new things in Canvas, sometimes they do epically fail and I'd like to be able to undo it after I've already launched it. Um, well, let's look at the different kinds of rubrics that we've got here and, and see if one of them might work based on that to give you some flexibility. And uh, Carl and I can look to see and test it. Yeah. You can delete it after you've used yeah, it. Yeah, because I don't know exactly, but these off some of them offer you wild flexibility, which is nice um, in different areas. So these are the, the different kinds. There is a single point rubric, which um, the description of this is, oh, hey, baby. Is that <laughs> Sophia? Oh, look at her. She's so cute. This um, is Sophia. She just woke up. So she's so sweet. Uh, oh, she helping. Adorable. She's so cute. She, she uh, She's so cute. She's getting so big. Um, the description of a single point rubric is that it focuses on proficiency, which is really, if you're looking for proficiency, um, it, it's kind of nice. It, the advantages is that it contains far less like verbiage, words, than an analytical rubric, and it takes far less time to create than other rubrics. The areas of like concern of student excellence are open-ended. So you don't need to like predict how a student may go wrong, how they may excel. And that's really nice. You don't have to do like the prediction and all the thinking of uh, meets expectations, exceeds expectations. All you have to do is figure out what does a student need to do to be proficient in this thing. That's all you need to to figure out. The disadvantage is that it requires a lot of writing up front, but that's it. You ha it's kind of front load, uh, front loading. This is what it looks like um, in, in kind of filling it out. You have to figure out what are the criteria standards for the task. And then you're gonna be filling out when you're grading evidence of exceeding standards and areas that need work. So you'll subtract, subtract points for areas that need work and you will add points in, in evidence of exceeding standards. How do we do that in Canvas? In a normal rubric, like a paper rubric, you would just figure out the areas of proficiency, ideas and content, um, organization, word choice, voice, convent, oh wait, whoopsie, um, and you would normally just fill this out and, you know, in pen, and then you, in, like in a table structure, and the student would fill this out. So, how would, how would we do that in Canvas? Well, you would, here's the criteria. So for ideas and content, we'd figure out, okay, what does that mean? And then for ideas and content, it would be like creates a clear understanding of the writer's opinion, well focused on the prompt, contains numerous relevant supporting examples and reasons. 
And then for the ratings, we would do kind of a, a free rating here. And it could be a range of ratings um, from full marks to no marks. And the instructor could assign based on was that criteria met or not. So you'd have to have this criteria filled out really explicitly. And then based on how they did, you would just fill in the marks. It's pretty, it, it actually, the grading goes really quickly based on a single point rubric. Um, and it doesn't take very long. It's not, not too difficult to do. And usually you have the student help you, like you can have the student assess themselves on this as well, do a self kind of grading, which is really awesome because they assess themselves, how do you think you did on this? And then you can be, and why? Why do you think that you did this? They can do a little um, comment on how, why do you think you did a four on ideas and content? Why do you think that you did a four on organization? Point to stuff in the paper or the assignment, that kind of thing. Um, and, you know, Wendy, you could be like, okay, well, how come you think that you did a, a three on this assignment out of five? Explain yourself. And so they could, would have to justify. So that could be some kind of flexibility in um, the rubric. So, Mary, what would that look like on Canvas online? This is, I mean, this you would... create an assignment where they have to um do a pre-assessment and then you look at that as you're trying to grade it yourself or I, I guess i'm not clear on the interaction well for this kind of thing they would turn in the assignment and in the comment box based on the rubric this would be the rubric below the assignment so um here the rubric would look like over here in the criteria criterion it would the rubric, they would turn in the assignment up over in here. So they'd turn in their assignment, right? And in the comment box, you could say, based on the rubric, what score would you give yourself in this area and in this area? Okay, of, so you're just gonna have long comments for each student. Or very short, it could be really short. Or what would your total score be based on this and why? Limit it to one sentence. You could do that. You don't have to. Got it. I, I was just trying to see, figure out how the mechanics worked. Thanks. Yeah, you could do that. I mean, that's one thing you could do. Um, analytic rubrics. The description is you can break down the task score and feedback on each part of um, the assignment with a calculated final score. The advantages, it gives considerable feedback to students embarking on an assignment. It is, it's analytical. So it is really um, advantageous for analytical fields and analytical thinkers. And it clearly shows what portions of the product are most important and which are not. The disadvantages, are developing a quality analytical rubric can be a lengthy product. It is a recursive process. So um, it is rarely perfect the first time. This is a rubric that is built over time. It gets better every time you do the assignment and sometimes changes with classes. The, a rubric that was really good for one class may not work as well for another class. Um, but it does get better over time. So you just have to kind of build it and it gets better with experience. Um, normally it's what I showed you, the example criteria one above meets below and then you have a score and you just total them up. And you really have to refine this, like I said, over time. What this looks like on paper is just this. This is one that I think most people are really, they know this 
rubric really well. You just break it down into pieces. Um, common scoring ranges are like exemplary, satisfactory, unacceptable, mm -hmm. and you have a grand total. And how you break it down, the criteria is based on your field, what you're looking at, and that kind of thing. Um, very common in like research presentations, that kind of thing. How we do it in Canvas is we have mastery subject, like we just break it down like, like this. Really easy to do in Canvas. Um, we can break it down into different points for each criteria so that it makes sense. We don't have to have the same amount of ratings per criteria. It can totally, it can be different. Um, we can make the descriptors as long or as short as we want, and each thing can have its own point value. So that's what they look like. And these are really common. They're common at our school. Um, students understand these pretty well. But they do take a lot of time to master. And you just expect to have to revise these when you grade the assignment because you'll be like, oh, I, I need to, I, I didn't, um, I need to add this thing to my accuracy of interpretation and our computation, or I need to add this thing to clarity of presentation, or I need to add a totally new criteria. So just expect to have to revise them. Rose, I bet, are you doing the analytical rubric? I am. Yeah, and you have to revise. You just do, and it's oh, totally yes. common. You, it's very common. It's normal. So I have another question, Ari, and I hope I'm not jumping the gun, but while we're looking at this one, yeah. as I'm in speed grader, mm -hmm. is there a way for me to, for each student, annotate right on that rubric so they know, let's say they got you know, five points for this assignment. Could I circle? Are you able to circle what you're rating for each criteria? Or are you going to look at this later and I can just hold my question? Um, let me, hold on a minute. Let's go to speed grader so that we can look at one. So, well, first of all, let me add an actual rubric to this assignment so that we can grade it. Um, I did a little bit of, bit of research for rubrics on an assignment and you can't edit a rubric after you've graded, used it you, in grading, but it does okay. give you that pop-up that says, hey, you've already used this, this will impact students grades that you've already done, but it will let you change it. Um, Excellent. But for example, if you change points and you make it worth like less points than it was and you already graded someone, they will keep that grade that they already had. So if it was out of 20 and now it's out of 15 and they got full points, they would be getting 20 out of 15. So you would just need to go back and regrade using the rubric mm -hmm. that changed. And then if you delete it, um, you can delete it and then in the grade book they keep that grade so they keep the points that you used from the rubric but the rubric itself is gone yeah you're welcome okay wendy what was your question um I think you're answering it by showing me that it looks like for each criteria, you can put in a separate point value and add a comment. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So what you can do is when you have a rubric, you can be like, boop, boop. And then you can be like, comment. Yippee. And then you can come down here and you can add a little comment on each thing. Um, and every time you have a comment, yep. Mm. When you view the rubric, oh, let's go actually back out. 
so that we can look at what the student views. Oh, thank you. I was going to ask what the students mm -hmm. see because often I get a question of, I, I don't know how to see the comment that you're talking about. So hopefully it's obvious to them. Mm -hmm. um. I'm sorry, I'm trying to go into my, I need to leave my student view. It's not showing me, I apologize. Um, here we go. I don't know why it's not, sh oh. It, it, sh it will show you all the little comments that are left. See? Right there when it says show rubric. And you're able to see the score. And all the comments. What does that look like from the grades uh, page? Wait a minute. Oh, sorry, as a student view from the grades, which means you'd probably have to. I don't, it's not going to let me, I need uh, Yeah, I think grades is hidden from students. It is. It is, but I can fix it. It's not showing me. It's not showing me on student view. Okay, I was just wondering. Because it's test student, which is a bummer. Um, but Normally it would just, yeah, I'm sorry, it's not showing me. Um, Wendy, did that sort of answer your question? Um, yeah, it did, it did. Okay. It, it, I, I guess I still struggle with Canvas knowing exactly what the students see because our student view doesn't always really show us exactly what they see. Mm -hmm. So it's always it's always challenging, you know, jumping off the cliff with something new like this and not knowing how many how many things are going to come slam back at you with questions you can't. Yeah. Answer. So it should show in the grade book. I just put a link in the chat. Um, so for the student, when they click on their grades, one of the little icons next to like the little speech bubble where where if you've left a comment, mm -hmm. it will have like a little checklist and when they click on that it will open the rubric directly in the grades area and it looks like this hey Whitney is there a, um is there anything in the student canvas training module that would that we could point them to because often I mean I think our, my students in particular um, are just overwhelmed with the online platform and many mm -hmm. of them particularly those with disabilities are just like, ah. Um, and so if I had places to point them, it'd be super helpful. Yes, the link I just put in is the Canvas page on finding feedback. 
Okay. In the orientation course. Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. And, you know, and they do struggle with finding the feedback, especially finding the rubric. Mine do too. And it, it can be hard. And I'm like, where do I find it? You're like, oh no. And it's, there's nothing more of a bummer than when you grade and they're like, I, I didn't look at it because I can't find it. And you're like, oh gosh, okay. Um, the analytical, the primary trait, wait, did I already do that? Nope. Primary trait rubric uh, breaks down tasks and levels of performance built from the bottom up. Um, the score is based on the lowest level achieved. So the advantage is that you can reuse the common primary traits across assignments. The disadvantage is that it requires careful reflection on all levels of a product and performance. So it can be really hard to build this, really hard. Um, and I've helped people in comm studies build this rubric. That's why this, this one is here because it was a comm studies request and no ability to weigh on individual traits when they are combined. The score is based on the lowest level. So it doesn't make a lot of sense actually until you look at it. Um, you build, you start on zero points and then you build up. So that's what it looks like. You start at zero and then you build up. One is criteria in addition to the items below, two building from that, three building up from that, and four building up from that. So you start at the bottom and then you build up. And this is what it looks like. This is based on a discussion rubric. Um, oh, and it starts at the bottom and so it, it was kind of when we first started this it was um i was like well, it's kind of a pessimistic way to look at it but then i was like okay so what is what does it mean to not not participate and then what does it mean to actually participate how do we start at the bottom and then build up and it was really um a, a backwards kind of design building and so, well, the opposite of backwards design, but so discussion rubric, students are expected to participate in online, online activities and discussions. Because of the importance of discussion to meeting the objectives of this course, students will be evaluated on the frequency and quality of their participation, including the level of preparation for discussion and student analysis and integration of the assigned materials. Students are expected to communicate their ideas clearly and persuasively. This rubric provides the levels of quality expected in this course. This was built because people just weren't discussing um, online. And so we went from zero all the way up to four. What does participation, quality participation look like in a discussion forum? And it went all the way from like one up to four. One was the student irregularly logs onto the course system fails to reliably respond to requests for input and does not clearly contribute to team exercises. And then four was this level of quality includes all categories below, so everything, and is distinguishable according to the regular, timely, and high quality nature of the participation. For example, this level of contribution not only responds to preceding postings, but it reflects insight and depth of understanding of course material and or stimulates additional relevant discussion. So it made it really clear what it looked like. And um, because of that, and they went over this, what that looked like, the discussion um, expectations and participation was, it, it improved quite a bit from the quarter before. Does that make sense? So comment here then, for example, yeah. in my class, um, I students get 10% 10, 10 of the grade comes from the participation. Mm -hmm. so probably what we could do instead of you know, having actual points, we could, I could just say 20, the lowest level, you get 25% of that point total, then, then 50%, then 70%, then 100%. However, we want to, however, we want to arrange the, the, um, the points or the percentages and things like that. Right. Yeah, you could do yeah. that. And this is like a paper, a paper thing, how we build it in canvas 
is like this, the primary trait. This is the criteria. Um, these are the ratings. Boom, 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 boom. Four points total. If, you know, if they score four, if they, you know, do all of it, they get four, three, two, one. And this is for a discussion, but you could do this for their participation for the entire quarter, you know? And so if they get, if their participation for the entire quarter is what, 100 points, you know, 175, 50, whatever, however you wanted to do it. And they, they, Holistic rubrics provides tasks as a whole. Um, the advantages, they allow evaluation of a large number of projects really quickly. Make transparent the elements needed for quality and items generally considered ineffable. The disadvantages are they require a norming process and require samples at each level of quality, which is I think what you're talking about, Walter. And they do not allow, uh, at least not very much, for variation in performance. So that can be problematic. Um, as long as that norming and samples are clear, it, it works out. But sometimes there's questions with that. And that can be especially tricky when you're working online because you just don't have as many opportunities for that norming process. So, you know, this is what a holistic rubric looks like. You have a score and you have general areas and then you have points and detailed descriptions. But everyone generally has to be on the same page and there needs to be an example of what a two points looks like and what the detailed description is and what that general area you know, means and looks like. This is really common in writing assessments and in portfolio type um, things, art, um, all kinds of things really, but, but it really, it only works if you have that sample, the sample available and examples of things. So this is what a paper prompt looks like. And this is how we do it in Canvas. We have the holistic rubric, so we have criteria all the way down, and then we have the holistic, the ratings, and the zero points is illegible, and it reflects back to what the paper looks like, non-scorable and off prompt. We have those available in Canvas as well, zero points, not scorable. We can't score them because it's just not available. Um, speed grader is my favorite thing. Speed grader makes life so much easier when you have um, when you have this. I showed I showed you guys what how to how I grade in Canvas with this. I'm gonna regrade it. When you have the rubric attached to an assignment, you can literally just go through and be like this and this and this and this and this and this and it attaches scores. And if you have like a full mark or a no mark, it makes it really easy. And then you can save. Um, in addition, you can leave comments on the paper as little bubbles right here. Um, if you are using a computer, if you have a tablet, you can use this tool, which is a free draw. I can do it with my computer, but um, if you have a tablet or a drawing screen, you can leave free comments on the paper. Um, I have a pen that I use on my tablet that's really um, 
it, it, it's nice because you can leave like handwriting comments on the paper, which is wonderful that students can then just download with this tool right here and it as a PDF and save to their computers, which is really nice. But some people don't have those. And in lieu of that, just you can use this point annotation and leave comments over here. You can also highlight things right here. Um, you can highlight different stuff and leave comments. You can use this free text annotation and make text changes. You can strike stuff out. And so it's another way to leave feedback that gives you some different ways to interact with students directly on their paper or their assignment in addition to with the rubric. One other thing that I really love with SpeedGrader is you can leave this feedback and the comments, but you can also, when you're done, you can leave a little comment down here with your mic or with the webcam. You can just, hey, this is a comment about your paper. I'd like you to consider this and this and this and this. And this other thing, excellent job, the end. And comment about paper. And save it. And they'll get this comment about their paper, um, which if you're running low on time, you speak so much more quickly than you can, than you can write. So you can just leave them feedback on their paper. And that is another way to really get some good stuff into their paper as well. We are out of time, but I hope that was helpful. Very helpful. Um, will your PowerPoint also be available for us to go back in and look at that? Um, I, I can definitely make my PowerPoint available and this is recorded as well. Right, awesome. Um, and there were some slides that we didn't even get to. So um, in developing rubrics, make sure this, this specific part here, identify objectives, develop outcomes, but make sure that you just leave yourself like some grace to revise because you're not gonna get it right the first time. You're just not, and that's fine because students will be like, oh gosh, we need this. And you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, I forgot to include this thing. Or it's okay, it is okay. You're gonna get about 10% of it not right. That's all right, it's okay. And you're gonna revise it and it'll be stronger and better. <laughs> Let's all wave goodbye to Sophia. Bye Sophia. Bye-bye, baby. <laughs> oh, what a sweetie. All right, and if you have any questions, you can contact elearning at greenriver.edu. <laughs>